And we're about to grab TikTok and take them to go live with us. I had an absolutely wonderful weekend, which I'm eager to tell you guys all about. And I wanted to talk about homestead, homeschool, and what we're doing this week with the nature unit study. So let's grab TikTok and let's get this party started. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Looks like that was a TikTok of a professional basketball player losing $10 million. Well, that's because they don't teach anyone financial literacy, and these kids go to the NBA at 18 years old, or some of them even go to college, and by the time they get out, they get these huge contracts, and they have no idea how to handle their money. And then they all go broke. I believe 73% of professional basketball players file for bankruptcy within five years of retirement, and they make millions and millions and millions of dollars. It is quite a remarkable statistic and a rebuke of the education system because children graduate at 18 years old, and even if they go to college, they have not the slightest idea of how to handle money. Good morning, Foster Bear. I'm about to grab TikTok here. Let's see, camera, what do we want here? We want to go live. That's what we, ah, what did I do? All right, what is this? Go live, okay, teaching freedom. We're gonna go, ah, all right. Homestead and homeschool. All right, we have a title. And go live in three, two, one. Good morning, TikTok. You are here with YouTube and it is a beautiful day. Here in the sunny, sunny south, I'll let a few people trickle in and we'll get this party started. That's sad about professional athletes and their finances. Good morning, mother of warriors. Yes, that is sad indeed that 70% of NBA players file for bankruptcy within five years of retirement. And it gets into the financial education that children are receiving in school because not only are children not receiving a financial education, they're not getting entrepreneurial experience, but they don't even have the slightest idea of the basics of the financial system. How does the banking system work, right? How does interest work? How does debt work? How do loans work? How, do credit, how does credit work, right? And all of this stuff could be taught pretty seamlessly um, from a young age. Um, there are great programs available, um, Next Gen Personal Finance, Dave Ramsey has a few programs which really just teach the basics of financial literacy, but they don't even teach that. But that's not what I wanted to cover today. What I wanted to cover today was homestead and homeschool because it is Monday. And as you know, every Monday, we cover what we're doing with our year-long nature unit study. And this week, the children are going to do an assignment, which I think is really, really cool, something that anyone can do that children learn a lot from and um, gain an important life skill in doing. And that is our students this week are going to be making their own worm farms, which to many of you parents might sound absolutely disgusting, but from a homesteader like myself who spends a lot of his time shoveling cow manure, well, that's not really a big deal. We don't mind the worms because we know that cow manure and worms and the right bacterias and funguses, you put them all together, you mix them in the soil, and that is a recipe for the most nutritious, vitamin, nutrient, mineral-filled stuff in the world, stuff that will make you and your children grow big and strong. So we want our children to grow up understanding this. So this week, as part of our year-long nature unit study, the children are going to make their own worm farms. And as always, you'll have a lot of flexibility in how that looks with your family, with your budget, with your, um, the needs of your family, the skills of your children. Any, the point is that they're learning to do things in the real world. Now, the example I'm going to give in terms of the worm farm is basically you take three um, plastic containers, right? You drill holes in all three containers, not just on the bottoms of the containers, but also along the top edges. You stack the three containers on top of each other. Um, and then what that does 
as it creates layers for the worms, right? Because they could crawl through the holes and get through all three containers. Uh, so the top container ultimately will be where the worms reside. And the reason for that is because that's where the food that you drop in there, it's going to be on the top. So the worms come to the top, they eat the food that you um, drop in there, and then what happens is they actually um, wound up laying eggs, right? And the eggs wind up actually going down to the second level of your structure, and then you use the second level of your structure to take these worm eggs and you put them in, um, you know, you put them in the dirt of where your crops are. And then you have worms being hatched in the dirt where you want those worms being hatched. And the coolest part is the bottom bucket. You actually, you don't drill holes in the bottom bucket. The bottom of the three buckets catches water. So what you do is you catch the worm water, right? The dirt compost worm water at the bottom and then once a week it actually could serve as a fertilizer where you take <laughs> sorry about that phone's falling where you take the top two you take the top two buckets off right you take the top two buckets off and you take that water and you mix it in with other water and you pour it on your crops and it actually works as a fertilizer right so there's so many benefits of having a worm farm. And of course the children in our homeschool community um, who have been doing our year long nature unit study, they've been studying the microbiology of soil. So they understand the roles that bacteria and fungus play in these biological processes, processes and they have, they'll be learning more about the role that worms play because the worms not only eat certain bacteria, which ultimately allow the um, nutrients and the minerals to be released into the plants, right, for the plants to absorb them. Um, but the worms also play a very important role in that they create roadways. What do you mean worms create roadways? Well, think about your dirt, it's compact, right, especially if you have a clay type of mixture, right? One of the things our students have been studying this year in our year long nature unit study is the water has a hard time going down worms they are very convenient because what they do is they actually make little roadways that the water could travel down so that the water could get through your soil it gets to the roots the roots absorb it so all of this stuff is very important to the food that we eat i, I was listening to um, a good buddy of mine pat life he has the pat life podcast i've been on it a few times and um pat was talking about how he was with someone and the food he was eating dropped into the dirt and he just picked the food up and ate it. And they, they looked at him sideways as if that was gross that he just ate the food out of the dirt. And he said, well, where does your food come from? I'm like, what do you mean? Where does your food come from? Right? Most people are so high tiff gog are so detached from where their food comes from that they don't put together that no, it's not dirt. That's where your nutrients, that's where your, your minerals and your vitamins, it all comes from the dirt. So this week, our students will be doing that. I'm very excited about it. Um, and, and that just adds on to what we've been doing, where they've already built their own garden boxes. Um, this week, a member of our community, um, Jessica, posted the pictures of the garden boxes her children made, which were absolutely immaculate. And what they did was so creative, and it's, it's really a skill, that carpentry skill that will last a lifetime for them. But what they did was they took an old bed frame, I think it was bunk beds, and they broke down the bunk beds, and they um, structured them in a way where it, everything fit, and they actually turned their old bunk beds into these garden boxes, and now they're gardening in their old bunk beds. And it came out so beautiful to think that children all under 11 years of age completed this assignment uh, and it's and I, I inboxed I inboxed Jessica afterwards just to talk to her about it and you know I, I said I was like you know this is so amazing what I would do at this point right if your children take to an assignment and, and this is where we do the unschooling right so we're doing this project-based learning 
where our students are making their own ladybug feeders, building their own garden boxes, composting. Um, this week, they're making their own worm farms. Well, when you have a student, a child, that really enjoys making a garden box, right? They really enjoy the carpentry of that. What you do is you start on school and you say, oh, that's cool. You know, there, there are books available that could really teach you how to make anything you want. Like if you want to make a chair or whatever it is you're interested in, right? Then we can do that. They go, oh yeah, yeah, I'll get you the book. They're available for like $10 on Amazon, right? So what I suggested is, hey, get your child this book, right? And once a month or every other week, depending on your child's interest, budget, what it might be, uh, have your child build something else out of wood. And then once they really get into the flow and they become proficient in carpentry, you have them start building things like bird feeders or whatever. I don't care what it is, garden boxes, right? And listing them for sale on sites like Etsy, Facebook Marketplace, right? And you start teaching them how to take a skill, turn it into a product or service, take that product or service, bring it to a market, and then from there, you could focus on building websites, photography, marketing, sales, um, accounting, how to deal with the financials, different types of investments. You could learn that all stemming from this project-based learning that we're doing. And it's a very powerful thing once you understand it. And there's a reason that we talk about this stuff so much because understanding these philosophies will change your child's life. You know, what we do with the nature unit study is we are doing project-based learning. And then what I'd like to see all of you do, what I'd like to see all of the unschoolables do, or any parent out there who's not a member of our community and just wants to understand these concepts, is you take that project-based learning, that building a garden box, that building a ladybird feeder, that um, uh, making a worm farm, and then you do some unschooling. So you say, hey, Professor Gel, you do some unschooling where you say, okay, well now you like carpentry, let's learn it a little bit more and let's use that to get you some entrepreneurial experience. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? I'm gonna go back and read your comments. I just would like to get this stand correct. I have two stands here with two devices, but one of them is being very annoying. And that's probably because I got it at five and below and it doesn't, it's not engineered very well, but nonetheless, I just got it to stand. So it'll fall in a minute, but until then <clears throat> we're good. Now I'm probably going to have to get a better stand. All right. So let's see what the people are saying. Good morning. Yeah. I'm fishing, fishing crushes. Yes, I had a great weekend. I wanted to talk about the weekend. Love all your advice. We'll be buying another book to add to my kids' collection. Well, thank you for that. And make sure you download the free lesson plans that come with the books. I make them myself. Um, and they're very powerful. Um, so, yeah. So, that's what we're doing with our nature unit study. And it, it really gets into our underlying philosophy of... We want our children to have a childhood filled with real world application in which they're following their interests, they're engaging in activities that they'll probably do throughout the rest of their lives that will teach them skills that they can get entrepreneurial experience with, that they can do a lot of different things with. Far Mama Bear, I love it. I will do this with my kids this week. I did unintentional worm an unintentional worm farm last year in my potato pot it was amazing to see all those worms kids can learn value with worms and soil and growing food absolutely and then the skills you could teach them to go along with it like we just talked about the carpentry aspect of the nature unit study right but when your children are engaged in project-based learning like we've been doing with the nature unit study I mean, you can teach them so many skills, right? Like one of the things the children have learned is composting and anyone could do composting with their children. And then when you teach them composting, the end you get into, you say, okay, well, what, what are we doing here? What is all this doing? So you start to research, teach them how to research soil biology and the 
bacterias and the funguses, right? Um, we, we've made fertilizer as part of our nature unit study, right? So how to use a banana peel or egg, um, or egg, um, egg shell to make a fertilizer or coffee grinds. There's, there's a lot of different things you can do. Um, we do projects that stem off of that. So our children have done a lot of art and studying the different forms of art within their nature unit study. They've done a lot of photography in which they've gotten out into nature. They've tried to take pictures of bugs and capture their eyes. They've taken pictures where they have something that's the focus of their picture with the sunset in the background, right? They've learned about the rule of third in which basically photographs have a grid. And if you keep your photo touching that center grid, the corners of that center grid, then it's typically more aesthetically pleasing. Not always, but it's a general rule that could help your photography skills. Um, so children can learn all of these skills and it's the of skills that ultimately lead to people being free. And, and that's the objective because as I say all the time, 95% of public school students, and I, I don't think that's an exaggeration, are incapable of living a free and independent life when they're 18 years old. They're not capable of getting a job that pays them enough to you know, earn a living or starting a business. And, and that's a travesty because if you educate your children right, if we educate our children right, then we could set them up where that's not an issue and they are very well positioned when they're 18 years old. And it really gets into, do you teach them critical thinking? Do they have actual skills, carpentry, art, music, photography, videography, construction, engineering, uh, web design, actual skills, right? And plumbing, hair cutting, right? Actual skills. Mosquitoes. I, I just look over at my wife and she's just always being attacked by mosquitoes. And yeah, we need to plant a lot of um, cilantro. Is it cilantro? No, it's a citronella. Citronella. We need to plant a lot of citronella this week. But um, my homeschooled homestead children have been taught life skills and self-sufficiency first. And, and, and that's what it's all about because, you know, people think of education and they're like, oh, you know, you sit in a classroom and you get grades. And like, don't get me wrong, like subjects are important. Like, yeah, it's important to learn history and, and all this stuff. Give it. In schools, they teach fake history and, and I'm sure you guys get that. Um, but it ultimately, it's skills that free a person. I always say it takes one skill to free a man. You know, um, I use that line because it's memorable and rhetorically powerful, right? It takes one skill to free a man. But it's true, right? It's true. It's skills that free a person. And in the last two years, when we've seen, we've seen how many people feel like they are indentured servants to their employers, right? Where they've been told, you have to get something done that you are not comfortable with, that you think might be harmful to yourself. And people still have felt compelled to do that because they're like, well, I have to pay a mortgage. I have to, well, what they're really saying is they don't have confidence that they'd be capable of earning money outside of that job, right? Now, give it, they've situated themselves poorly in that they put themselves in a position in which they were reliant on that money in the first place. You become trapped in that rat race, trapped into that servitude because they have to pay a mortgage or they have to pay for it. And, and don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not like, sometimes you have to be in debt. I understand that. Like sometimes it's financially, that's the move, but to like our culture, like is, is bad. Like people should be, the objective should be living out of debt. And if you can't do that, okay. But the objective should be to live out of debt, to live within your means. And if you do that, you become much more difficult to control and make no mistake. There are people, entities, institutions that invest a lot of money and resources into controlling you and to controlling your children. And ultimately what we're doing as homesteaders, what we're doing as homeschool parents, right? I run a homeschooling company, right? As homeschool parents is we are educating our children. We are raising our children so that they are capable of living free and independent lives 
so that they're not reliant on the system and they don't get trapped. By the way, anyone interested in what I do, it's classicallearner.com. Homeschools Connected is our private homeschool community. That's where we do our nature unit study. I teach courses for it on the Bill of Rights, the American Revolution. Um, I, a, t a course called Foundations of Propaganda in which I teach children. I make them familiar with the different mechanisms of propaganda using the Cubs to Bears book series, which I wrote. Um, I teach classes on the media industrial complex. Uh, we have a great community of homeschool parents with a, an open conversation, a, a running chat which um, everyone really enjoys. We have state groups and people that have met in Homeschools Connected have had meetings in the real world, have got their children together in the real world. Um, and we have a pen pal program. And yeah, and that's all on Homeschools Connected right on my Discord. Um, and it's um, $10 a month with the promotion code FREEDOM, um, all lowercase for anyone interested in that. And again, you get access to everything I brought up. So let me see what you guys were saying. My oldest has been in public school for six years. By the way, guys, smash the like button. Share this. It helps reach people. My oldest has been in the public school for six years. My biggest reason for keeping my last three home with me. Yeah, well, when you see what happens in the public school system, it's very motivating because... So many people I've spoken to are upset for a variety of reasons. Like, yeah, there's the more obvious reasons. Like, you're upset about the facial covering situation or you're upset about the inappropriate things that children are taught in school, right? I think we all know what inappropriate things children are taught by these perverted school boards, right? And people get upset about that. But even, like on another level, just the indoctrination into like children are taught that statism is there to save them. Like a great example is how they're taught about like the Rockefellers. They're like, Oh, the Rockefellers had this trust. And then Teddy Roosevelt came in. He was the trust buster and the government came in and just protected us from the trust. Okay. You're, you're giving one example hundreds of years ago, but you, what you fail, what you leave out from that point is how the Rockefellers then used their money to leverage control over the government, take over the medical industry, which you're teaching the children that, oh, you better not question, right? Right, to take over all of these industries that the Rockefellers took over, right? The education system itself, right? So like, they are teaching your children that authority is right, right? That authority is always right and not to question authority when in reality, it's the opposite. That Anything that is largely influenced by money is ultimately going to be corrupted. And because of that, you have to always question these institutions, which is why I'm currently teaching a course on the media industrial complex, right? In which children are not learning about fake news. They're learning that media has funding, right? And where does that funding come from? So they could read the Congressional Church Committee report and say, okay, well, the Central Intelligence Agency has been... Um, sending billions of dollars to corporate mainstream media, well, what impact does that have on the way they report the news? Five corporations control 90% of media, right? So, and, and we're, you know, as the year goes on, we'll study more and more of this stuff. So everything that happened in public school is the opposite of what, what should be happening. And parents are waking up to it and we're doing a great job. I mean, I mean, the members of our community and members, you know, just homeschool parents in general in America are doing a great job of breaking free from that system of control. Now they're building on to math, reading, and the basics. They're in first and second grade. That's awesome. And that's what you need at that age. And, and what you want to do is a lot of, you want to get their math, their reading, their basics. You could do a lot of fun science experiments, right? A lot of fun stuff like that. Um, and you want to just follow their interest and use that interest. Like if your child likes art, like do a ton of curriculum around art. Like why not? Like just embrace that. Teach them graphic design. Teach them all these different forms of art. Teach them painting. Teach them sketching. Like, you know, and, and by the time they're 12 years old, 
if you know what you're doing and most homeschool parents do, you do the unschooling, right? Project-based learning. You could have them contracting through sites like Fiverr at 12 years old. And by the time they're 18, they could have a completely free independent life in which they're making their own money contracting, you know, doing artwork on sites like Fiverr. Like there's just, there's so much you can do. And, um, that's so superior to the nonsense, the nonsense taking place in public school. Wow. So true. Way more hard to be controlled. Never thought of it like that. Yeah, I mean, the number one lesson in public school, I'm going to make some videos on this this week, actually, because I like to recycle through John Taylor Gatto every few months and just redo the Gatto stuff, and people, new people can learn about it. Um, but the number one lesson taught in public school is that truth comes from authority, whether that being the authority of the teacher or the authority of the textbook. So they don't teach children to question institutions. They teach children that institutions protect them, right? And in reality, I mean, institutions are, are very corrupt. Now, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like there are positive aspects to institutions, but um, if you're not aware of the negative aspects of institutions, you're, you're going to become just a, a servant to them. And they will, and they, as I like to tell my son, they will melt your brain. My son's so hilarious. So when I, when I pray at night, I pray with my son because the best way to teach my children about my relationship with God is for them to hear how I talk to God. So one of the things I pray to God about at night is um, one of the things I struggle with is looking at my phone too much, right? So I'll say, um, I say, God, um, I've been gluttonous with the way I've um, looked at my phone I check it to see the red dots, to see the notifications, and I don't have to do that, and I know I don't have to do that. And when I spend time doing that, I know it's not time I'm spending doing other things that are productive. I know it's not time that I'm spending um, with my children, with my with mom, with my wife, and I need to continuously try to improve on that. And it's a balance I have to find because it's also related to my work and what I have to do. Give me the strength. I pray for the strength that I'll be stronger, that I'll be smarter, and I'll know when to look at my phone and when not to look at my phone. And, you know, my son, sometimes when we're sitting there together, because I say things like that, and I, I like to use like fun rhetorical things, like um, if he's, I let him watch TV, but if he's watching too much TV, I'll like, Brady, that's gonna melt your brain. <laughs> it's gonna melt your brain, man. Um, so I try to teach him to self-regulate. And he'll see me on my phone and he'll go, dad, don't look at your phone too much. It's going to melt your brain. Right? So just things that we do and guys, uh, cause I think people could benefit from. I, I was in church on Sunday and the priest, and I'm not like I'm not bashing the priest, like, or the minister or whatever. Um, yeah, I'm not. Uh, he was given the sermon and I, I'm not bashing him. I'm like, you know, I think he's a good guy. I think he, uh, genuine guy, but a lot of, a lot of the time when they talk about like relationships with God, they're like, just say, just say you believe in God and that you agree with God and you will be forgiven. I'm like, no, it's more than that. Like you, you have to have a real relationship with God. And it's like, and like when people say that, like, oh, God forgives you. Like, then you'll hear the people like, oh, oh, so you think he forgives Hitler? Like, if Hitler just says he believes and he's sorry, it's like, you're not understanding. Like, when you really start to have a relationship with God, it's, it's not about saying sorry. It's about God is attached to your soul, right? Your soul is attached to the divinity of God. And when you start to really believe in God and really repent for your sins, and when I say repent, start to criticize yourself for your own sins, to really acknowledge your sins, to say, I'm doing this wrong and I need to be better and I need to be stronger at this and I need to not do this again, right? When you start to have a relationship like that, where you become sorry on a soul level, when you become sorry on a soul level, right? That you truly move beyond something, that you forgive yourself, 
then through your soul's connection through that divinity, through the forgiving of yourself and truly meaning it, God will forgive your sin because you have washed yourself of it. You have risen above it. You have risen your level, your frequency, your vibration. Your vibration is the right word there. You have risen your vibration, right? Right? Frequency, think of um, the level through which you understand things, right? Right? You have different radio frequencies. Like two people will hear the same message and one person will completely miss the context of it, right? Frequency. But vibration is... Um, your level, how in tune you are with the universe itself, how in tune you are with God, right? Um, this gets into cymatics and all this stuff. I mean, this is, there's, you know, this is some serious stuff, but um, anyway, so I don't know. I like to talk about these things. I like to talk about um, God and my relationship because I think that I have a responsibility to do that. And um, I am to be fruitful and multiply and spread the Garden of Eden and to spread the word. And I spread the word as I understand it. And um, that's what I do. Okay. We were in the same place a few years ago. Well, let me see. Hold on. Only one of three is a strong reader, but all three can garden, butcher a chicken, run a farm. So if your children aren't strong readers, don't worry about that. So what you want to do is get into the habit for 30 minutes a day. Let them read whatever they want. Just, it's like lifting weights. Every day we read, right? If you lift weights every day, you'll start to get stronger. Don't worry about Johnny is in ninth grade and he must be reading ninth grade material. Why? If Johnny reads at a seventh grade level and you want him to not hate reading, then have him read seventh grade material, right? Like he can read books, like just read books. Like if he wants to read, I don't know, whatever, Harry Potter, I don't care. But if he wants to let him read things that he's interested in and he'll enjoy the process of reading and he'll start to get better at it. And then for like tough reading, like, cause he's doing that 30 minutes of reading. So for like, his science work and stuff, get him like audiobooks and let him, let it have it read to him, right? Like people make it so complicated. It doesn't have to be that complicated. And then in terms of your children, gardening, butchering a chicken, running a farm. So you should be giving them and do project-based learning, like give them their own. I, I don't know how much land you have. Obviously this is, you know, dependent on land and stuff, but give them their own 15th of an acre right? Whatever it might be and say, you can garden this area. And here's your objective. I want you to raise crops to sell at the farmer's market at the end of the year, or I want you to grow flowers and start some type of basic entrepreneurial um, endeavor in which you're selling those flowers through a farm stand, through partnering with a store, right? Like what great experience. Imagine this, this child, you know, this 12 year old approaching a store and saying, I'm growing these flowers and I could give you flowers at a very, um, a very fair rate, right? You're gonna get them at a great price, so you can mark up the sale. I'm gonna sell them to you wholesale. You're gonna charge people retail. You're gonna make money, I'm gonna make money, right? This is your 12-year-old going to a business, right? Think about the life experience in that. Think about the mindset in that. This is project-based learning. This is unschooling, right? And this is what we do in Homeschools Connected, by the way. I coach, we have, um, an open chat in which we talk as a community about anything and everything. Like I don't what you want to talk about. If you want to talk about anything you want, we talk about it. Um, you know, it's a very, we're just a community. And then we have, um, inboxes too. And I inbox with everyone and I help them set up their unschooling. And it's, it's one of my favorite aspects of, of what we do. I hate my job, but live paycheck to paycheck, so I'm trapped. All right, well, start developing a trade, your skills in a trade. So if you have a skill, you could free yourself. And or start some type of side hustle, um, whether that's, I mean, you could start simple. Like, it's the summer, get a lawnmower and see if you could secure some, you know, some houses doing their gardening, right? Like... 
cutting their grass. Like, just get creative. You can make garden boxes and see if people want to hire you to build those same exact garden boxes. You can do internet-based businesses in which you do drop shipping, right? There's a lot that you can do. Just start doing something. Because right now, what you're saying is you're in the card game of life and you got dealt. At this point, you're saying the, car, the hand of cards you have is a poor hand of cards. I'm stuck paycheck to paycheck. I'm in the rat race. Okay, I need new cards. You have to give yourself new cards, right? Well, go get yourself some cards because if you're just sitting around like, my cards suck, are you going to get new cards? No. Well, your situation's not going to get better, right? Start building. Plant a seed. I always tell people, like, people see me and they're like, I talk about living within your means and I moved my family, I sold my house to get out of debt, move my family across the country, start a homestead, grow my own food, start a business, I'm running a business, I'm, you know, I'm doing all these different things, homeschooling my children, you know, and you'll, you'll get some people like, must be nice, and like I tell people like, plant a seed in your windowsill and, and water it every day and get it sun and watch it grow and then uh, develop that mindset and say, I'm gonna plant seeds just like this one throughout every aspect of my life. And baby step through baby step, I'm going to climb a mountain. And when you start doing that, I mean, opportunities will come to you that you didn't think. Like, so much of what I do now is I, I don't seek out opportunities. Opportunities find me because I'm doing things that, are, that get people's attention, right? Like, I've written... I've written awesome children's books. I'm an Amazon number one bestseller, The Right to Bear Arms, right? That my book, The Right to Bear Arms. I, um, I run this homeschool community. I'm teaching people how to break free from the public education system. And when you start to do that, opportunities present themselves to you. So like one of the things I did this past year, which was such a, a cool thing, is I gave a speech. I gave a speech in front of the Constitution Party National Convention. They invited me to come out. Um, they invited me to come out and give them a speech about my stance on um, the state of American culture, on governance, and how to build. And these were like, these were very influential people, right? These were the heads of the party, one of the biggest political parties in the country. And like, that opportunity presented itself because I've been doing interesting things. I, I have... The phone numbers of people that have ran for Congress that like text back and forth with me. Um, a lot of really big podcasts. I'm in talks with a really cool guy right now um, that I might be partnering with um, who's like a, a big national podcast, right? So like opportunities present themselves when you do interesting things and you just, you got to get yourself out of the mindset of things are happening to you and be like, no, I'm a person who makes things happen. And then what you do is you educate your children, not just to have that mindset, but to grow up in that culture, experiencing that so it's all that they know. And if you do that, they will be very powerful. And in turn, they'll be great Americans and they'll be great allies to my children. And that is what it's all about. Because my, my goal as a father, as a man who's, who, who my father fought in Vietnam, a United States Marine, his father, my grandfather fought in World War II, a United States Marine, right? My, as, and they did that because they wanted me to have a better life. They wanted me to grow up in a better world. And the way my children grow up in a better world, the way I do that is I write my children's books and I show people how to educate their children and I raise them, I educate them in freedom, right? I'm teaching a course right now on the Bill of Rights and the American Revolution. Give children a foundation which they can sink their roots into because a nation of people with deep roots is hard to pull out of the ground. Well, one of the reasons they've attacked our education system so much, they've attacked our history, is because they want Americans to have weak roots so that there's no nation right? They want you to have no group cohesion, right? Everything they do is about dividing and conquering. It's about breaking group cohesion. Well, getting the next generation 
sinking their roots into the foundations of America, well, you could start to take your country back. You, the trees here? Ha <laughs> ha! Brady, let me see it. What did it fall off? We lost some nectarines in the trans. Brady, don't lose that nectarine. Wait, no, we filled his pockets up. You filled his pockets? Yeah. How many fell off? A decent amount. How many are on the tree? A decent amount. But I just had a nectarine tree delivered to the house. I, I got it the other day, but it was too tall to bring over. This is a nectarine. It will never come to be. But I wonder if the seed's in here. Because if the seeds in here, I'm planting a nectarine tree today. Brady, should we turn these into seeds? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. How many fell off? A lot. It's upsetting. Why'd they fall off? Because of the way they put them in the jar. All right. But you got your nectarine tree. I'm happy I have my nectarine tree. I just... We had some casualties. We had some casualties. We picked up... Dad, Dad, this is for the birds. It's That's not, for the birds? Yes, not a nectarine. What is it? I don't know, but it's for the birds. We picked up a nectarine tree, a plum tree, and two Russian pomegranate trees, which I am very excited about. And all the baby trees, they have tagged and ready to sell. Oh, they, their baby trees came in? Yeah. Cool. Hey, Dad. Oh, I dropped my nectarine. Brady, quick, get the nectarine. Where is it? I don't know. Oh, it's here. Mama found Wait, it. I'm going to go carry some trees in and some dirt. Brady, you want to help me carry some soil in? Yeah, I'm happy I got this. Place. All right. Don't lose those nectarines, mister. There's seeds in those, and I want to plant them and make them into even more nectarine trees. Smell them. Oh, was, what do they smell like? They smell like peaches. They smell like peaches? Yeah. Do you think nectarines are similar to peaches? I think so. Yeah, come on. You want to plant them? Yeah. All right, let me just finish my stream, and then we're going to plant nectarines, and we're going to do our Kiwico okay. box. Yeah, look at this big one. Ugh, can't believe this fell off. This, was, this would have been great. This would have been a great nectarine. All right, but we will salvage this. We will turn this into multiple nectarine trees because we're gonna have nectarine trees for days for weeks for months for years for decades when your daddy's age we're still gonna have these trees yeah because those seeds stay for a long time that's right they live some of these trees stay longer than even you mommy and i will be here the trees will be here when we're gone because trees live for a really, really long time. Like the, um, the mango tree yeah. we planted, it lives for 300 years. Remember, remember when I counted to 100? Yeah. Remember how long that took? Yeah. 300 of those. Yeah, look at this. Nice, Brady. All right, so we'll plant those after. I, I hope the seeds are, are good to go, but I think they are. We'll find out, we're gonna find out. All right. Just want to see here. All right, let's see. I want to go back and read your comments. Yes, it's all on Discord. I was teaching my son and daughters. I no longer have them. I'm sorry to hear that. That's that's terrible. Indoctrination 100%. I couldn't believe how much public school had lied to me. Yeah, they're terrible. We decided to homeschool all three boys during the pandemic because of that whole situation. Absolutely. Now looking into Christian school. And I always tell people, you raise children with your values, right? Like, if you're Christian, you raise them Christian. If you're Muslim, you raise them Muslim, right? Like, you know, don't send your children to public schools when their values are antithetical to... I don't know how they're not antithetical to everyone. Babe, just, just leave the tree. I'll, I'll carry it. I'll be done in 10 minutes. Put the tree down. <laughs> She's out of control. All right. I'll help her carry it. When you first started, how were you able to create 
income to homeschool and to leave the system. Well, I started my business when I was still working, right? So I always tell people like, you should be building something for yourself. Like when you work for a, a corporate employer, you're always building something for them, right? Like, but if you start your own business, you're building something for yourself, for your children, for your legacy, for, right? Like there, it's just, there's so many advantages. And tell me right now that you don't sit in front of your television at night for two hours. How, how many hours do you think a night does it take to do a side hustle? And yes, like there's a lot of sacrifice. Like there, there was a time where I'm working a nine to five job, getting out of my nine to five job. And then I'm spending another five or six hours at night doing business stuff. Right. But ultimately you come out on the other end and you, you can get a lot of, and you know, it's just, you just gotta develop skills and do things. You know, it's like the, the modern day gladiators. They, they watch professional sports at night and they watch nonsense Hollywood indoctrination. And what they don't do is work to better their situation. And then that's, and you listen, you might do that and fail. And that's fine because if you fail, you just learned on how to not, you learned how to not do something, right? Thomas Edison tried and failed to make a light bulb 10,000 times. And when asked about it, he said, I did fail. I found 10,000 ways not to make a light bulb. You know, that's a true, the, the, the statement, there's truth in the statement, right? Like you do things in life, you calibrate, you recalibrate, you adjust, you readjust, and you figure out how to ultimately be successful and you will. Yeah, my program's year round because we're doing a year long nature unit study and I teach classes. Um, I teach a class. I take a short break to figure out what I want to do for the next class. So I take like a month off. Then I teach the next class. Then I take a month off. Then I teach the next class. And each class runs for like three months or something like that, depending on. I know it's not like said. It depends on how many classes I think are necessary for the message to get home. So that could be two months. That could be four months, depending on the subject matter and, and how it's going. Um, and then the replays from all the previous classes that I teach are all available. So, you know. And then our year-long nature unit study, which absolutely crushes. Best example is how we talk to the Lord exactly. Right, you have to turn away from sin, not just say you did wrong. Right. And, and that gets into meaning it on the soul level, right? What did mommy do? I see her. She's carrying gigantic trees across the yard because she's... No, she's doing a plant system. Oh, she has a plant carrying system? Yeah. How does the system work? Yeah. She just rolls it. She just rolls it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's like a wheelie system, right? She uses... I, I could see from here, Brady. But can I finish my stream? I'll be done in a few minutes. Don't lose our nectarines. All right, I'm pumped, Brady. Wait, can you wait for me to plant them? I plant one of them, but let me plant the rest of them with you. Because I want to plant like 10 nectarine trees. 10. 10. I'm not kidding. I want to plant like 10 trees. <laughs> I'm so mad my nectarines fell off that tree. <sighs> it's all right. It's all right. I'm not going to do what everyone thinks I'm going to do and freak out. We are taking our first high school field trip five hours away to the Ark Encounter. Oh, and Creation Museum. That should be a lot of fun. Is that in Ohio? Is that in Ohio? Great idea. Thank you. They have their own garden sections, but I didn't think of growing to sell. We actually had members of our homeschool community went to that museum this past week. That's what I mean. Like we have state groups. People have literally had meetups like that have met in homeschools connected and have met up with one another. Like 
we're building some very cool stuff. Now I'm thinking of farm stand, work on money, counting, and making change. There, yeah, that's perfect for an eight, seven, and five year old. That's perfect. I do plumbing, work side jobs like crazy. I'm still stuck. So you have to figure out how to turn that side job into a business, right? So, you know, I, I, would, I would start by doing a Google search and different side hustles that people with your skill set do. And then figure out how do you set it up so it's something you could scale enough where you only need to scale it where you get like, if you could make like half of your salary on your side hustle, then you've made enough where you could quit your job because once you're able to do that full time, right? Like if your side hustle is half of your regular salary, then you quit your job. Now you're doing your side hustle full time, right? You could scale it up. So you just, you got to do your research and take the time and do it. And obviously getting your bills lower would help with that. My husband and I just bought a new car. My coworker said, I wish I was rich. Well, I mean, they're like, must be nice. They must be nice. Must be nice. <laughs> must be nice to be rich. Like there are many forms of wealth. Like I have nectarine trees, peach trees, clementine trees, avocado trees, mango trees, apple trees. Is that not wealth? Like that's wealth. Like I have two beautiful children, the most amazing wife in the world, God willing, many more children. Like what is not wealthy about that? Like I am wealthy, wealthy, wealthy. And that has nothing to do with money. So like people just have the wrong priorities and they need to reevaluate. No, no, I, I just bought one nectarine tree, but now I'm going to take the nectarines, right? Because a bunch of the nectarines fell off in the move, apparently, which I'm not thrilled about. It, it, the, the tree was too tall for me to put in my car, so I had it delivered. And um, they, they delivered it for free because I go to their garden center a lot. And, um, but apparently in the delivery, a bunch of the nectarines fell off, which I'm pissed about. Uh, but now I'll take those nectarines. I'm going to plant them, the seeds. I'm going to plant hopefully 10 seeds today. And then five years from now, I'll have 11 completely functional nectarine trees. That's wealth. See, like you don't need money for wealth like that. I'll have an endless supply of nectarines. I could eat them. I could make pies with them. I could do all, I could can them. I could do all types of things with these nectarines, including sell them, right? For money, right? So I could literally give my neighbors, my friends, my community, like, hey, you want a present? I'll give you a nectarine tree. Like, well, think about what a great present that is. So like, people just have mindset problems. I should really, I, I mean, I'm the education guy, but like, I'm, am I think in my heart, I'm the mindset guy. People just have mindset problems. You helped me understand homeschooling and it gave me a push to start. Thank you. So you helped me. On, oh yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to help. And, um, what's your, what's your business? So I started the classical learner homeschooling company and I have my private homeschool community, which is homeschools connected. It, um, we have an amazing community of homeschool mothers and fathers. I teach courses. I teach a course on the bill of rights and American revolution, I teach a course on propaganda using the Cubs to Bears children book series, a course on the media industrial complex. We're doing a year long nature unit study in which children are developing skills and getting entrepreneurial experience. I coach all of our members on unschooling, which uh, I mean, we have so many members of our community doing amazing things with that. Um, so that's www.classicallearner.com homeschools connected. And if you use the promotion code freedom, it is $10 a month. I'm a second grade teacher. It's really important to understand most people don't have the opportunity to start a business at home. There's a lot of sacrifice. You are right, but some people just don't. No, I don't like to hear that excuse. That's nonsense. I, I, 
I was running a business. I was running a business as I was working a full-time job, as I was a father of two children and homeschooling. No, people, people have time, but people have excuses. I don't watch TV, but I'm tired. No, that's nonsense. Like, ask my wife how much I sleep. Ask my wife how much I sleep. I probably get, I get at most six hours of sleep, which is my goal. Because that's like, that's ideal. But usually, um, usually I get five hours of sleep, um, right? I'm up at 4 a.m. working so that I can work for three or four hours before the children wake up, right? So like people... People have excuses, but that's, that's nonsense. And that like, this will piss a lot of people off. I'll get you like, how dare you, right? Because what you do when you talk about things like this is you reveal, you reveal, I'm like, like a mirror to the issues of people's psychology, right? So they'll be like, oh no, screw you, screw you. Like, no, you're wrong. Like I'm, I'm showing you what you're doing wrong. Like, not that I do everything right, but like the mindset stuff. Yeah. Like this is. America, there's a, there's a epidemic, all right, in people having a poor mindset. By the time, by the way, while I was doing that, my wife, when we were in New York, was also running a full-time business out of the house. And we were watching the two children together. So I was working a full-time job, running a business, um, being a father to two children, homeschooling them, as my wife also ran a full-time business from the house. Oh, and, and my wife, and my wife was in medical school at that time, getting a, um, getting her degree in acupuncture. So I was working a full-time job, running a full-time business. My wife was working, running a full-time business. She was in medical school full-time. We had two children and we were homeschooling them. Right? So don't tell me about mindset. Don't tell me about time. Right? Right? You do have time. You just you have to develop the mindset. And I'm not saying you don't have the mindset. You just have to develop the mindset and you'll get there. At what point between getting your education and now did you realize public school was indoctrination? But yeah, cuz I was a teacher. So I don't know what point. Well, I didn't like what I saw in the school system. Like, I didn't like, like, I remember when I was in a ninth grade history class and I asked the students in the inner city, um, and I asked the students to find Africa on a map and none of them answered. And at first I just thought, oh, they're not answering. And then I realized that I had a classroom full of inner city ninth graders and none of them knew how to find Africa on a map. Um, then I was like, I was in the teacher's lounges and I saw how they talked about the students and how a lot of what went on was really self-serving to the teachers more than for the students. And then I came across thinkers like John Taylor Gatto, right, who wrote books like Dumbing Us Down, Weapons of Mass Instruction. I came across the works of Richard Grove and the Peace Revolution um, and his, his company Tragedy and Hope. And I, I really started to see the problems in the system and I wanted to do something different. And I started doing, um, I started the classical learner homeschooling company. I was doing one-on-one -on -one consultations in which I was basically setting up people's homeschools. And um, from there, it just grew. I, I started with one-on-one -on -one consultations. Then I built out an app, Homeschools Connected. And this is year three. And I started teaching um, original curriculum and teaching courses. And um, our growth has been through the roof. And it's been a real blessing. And then on top of that, you know, um, my books that I have. Like I said, I, I've written and published seven books, right? I'm an Amazon number one bestseller. I, um, so there's all that. And we're expanding into other things too. But I'll, I'll announce those things when it's time.
this is America. We all have opportunity. We do. Now, you know, a lot of people don't even know where to start, right? They like, because just working hard, like they say, oh, just work hard. Like, no, working hard. I mean, yeah, you should work hard, but you have to work smart. Like if you're not working smart, then all that hard work won't get you anywhere, right? So that, and that's where we start with educating our children the right way so that they understand how to work smart and how to build something. And, um, and us as people, we're, we're full-time students our whole lives. Like I'm a student, right? Always learning, always trying to learn new skills, learning, um, hearing people out, understanding perspectives, always listening to people that have been successful. Like what are their perspectives on how to do things and how things should be done? Spider. Welcome to the South. Welcome to the rock. Welcome to the South. And a bug in my drink. The South is just unrelenting. Unrelenting. All right. Up, oh, Aubrey's up. She's sitting calm now. Yeah, the the last two years were a blessing for a lot of people because they got a firsthand look at how broken the school system is and they got a trial with homeschooling. And a lot of people are finding that they really enjoy homeschooling, that the children actually develop much better socially, emotionally, right? Like children are meant to be with their parents and that the myth that you can't socialize your children, like my children are the most social children. Like Aubrey's 11 months and she's social, but like Brady is the most social child literally everywhere we go. Like everywhere we go, he makes like five new friends. It's hilarious. It's just, but that's because we always have him out in the world because we make socializing a priority. So, so, all right, guys, I'm going to call it a stream. www.classicallearner.com. My kids are totally different kids since homeschooling will never go back. Yeah, I mean, so many people discover that like public school zaps their love of learning it um it actually makes them antisocial because it puts them in an artificial environment where it's like you sit with these same age peers every day you form little cliques and then no one else talks to anyone else like no like in the real world you go out you meet new people every day you um you have to put yourself out there say hi i'm i'm brett hi i'm brady Right. And like that, that's what we do with homeschooling. So classicallearner.com. If you're interested in what we're doing, homeschools connected, use the promotion code freedom. It is all lowercase $10 a month. And you can find me classical learner on everything. Freedom isn't free. We have to earn it every day. And I will undoubtedly be back tomorrow at 9 30 AM Eastern to earn it. Da -da 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 -da. Coming to get my trees, girl. We're planting nectarines. Hi, Aubrey. How's my little girl? I'm coming to get you, baby. So let me turn this off. <laughs>